5.7 goes over different strategies in order to factor. Um, when you are factoring, you want to find or first ask yourself if there is a greatest common factor that you can factor out. If there is, do that. Um, from there, if you're left with a polynomial or a trinomial that has an A of 1, find the factors of your C term that add up to be your B term. If you don't have any, then you have a prime polynomial, which means it cannot be factored. So if we look at example 1, we're determining whether the polynomial x squared plus 3x plus 4 is prime or not. So with this, if we look at the factors of 4, we have 1 and 4, 2 and 2. We also have negative 1 and negative 4, negative 2 and negative 2. If we combine these, 1 plus 4 gives us 5, 2 plus 2 is 4, negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. All of these do not equal 3. So because none of your factors equal that middle term, this is prime. There are other ways to factor these polynomials. Sometimes you'll be given a binomial where you have your first and your second term that you can take the cube root of. When you have these, it's called factoring a difference or a sum of two cubes. You will use a formula. You'll take the cube root of the first term. You'll take the cube root of the second term. If the sign in the middle of the two terms is negative or minus, you're going to use the formula a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. If the sign in the middle is plus, you'll have a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So you'll realize with these that your sign that's in the first set of parentheses has the same sign that's in your binomial. And then the middle sign in the second set of parentheses has the opposite sign. Okay? So, first thing you do with these, find the cube root of both terms. If we look at example 2 for A, we're given x cubed minus 8. We can take the cube root of that x cubed. We can take the cube root of that 8. The A that we have is the cube root of x cubed, which is just x. Your B term is the cube root of that 8, which is 2. Now, there is a subtraction sign between these two terms. So we are going to use the formula a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. Fill in your a and your b for your a is x, your b is 2, and simplify. If we plug in these values, our a is x, we said our b is 2, so that gives us x minus 2 times a squared, which is x squared, plus a, which is x, times b, which is 2, plus 2 squared. From here, we're going to have x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. For example, b, we have y cubed plus 1. So our a is going to be the cube root of y cubed, which is just y. Our b is the cube root of 1, which is 1. We have addition between these two terms, so we're going to use the formula a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. We plug in these values. A, we said, was y. B, we said, is 1. So it's y plus 1 times y squared minus y times 1 plus 1 squared. Simplifying this, this gives us y plus 1 times y squared minus y plus 1. For example, C, we're given 8z cubed minus 27. For this one, our A is going to be the cube root of that 8z cubed, which is just 2z. And our B is the cube root 
of 27, which is 3. We have subtraction between these two terms, so we're going to use a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. If we plug in these values, we're going to have 2z minus 3 times 2z squared plus 2z times 3 plus 3 squared. Now, you see here, with this 2z squared, it's in parentheses. So when you simplify this, it's 2z times 2z. It's not just the z that's being squared. It's both the 2 and the z. So when you re rewrite this, you're going to have 2z minus 3 times 4z squared plus 6z plus 9. Our next part of this lesson goes over factoring completely. For example, 3, we have x to the fourth power plus x squared minus 2. So our whole idea here is to keep finding the factors of that negative 2 that add up to be a positive 1. The only difference now is that we have this x to the fourth power. So when this separates, it's not just going to be x times x. It's going to be x squared times x squared. So those factors of negative 2 are 1 and 2. In order to get a positive 1, we would have a negative 1 and a positive 2. So this factors out to be x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 2. Now, with this, you'll realize that the first term or the first set of parentheses that you have there is x squared minus 1. You can take the square root of that x squared. You can take that square root of the 1. There's a negative between the two terms. So this is a difference of squares. So we'll take the square root of the x squared. We'll take the square root of that 1. Our a is going to be x. Our b is going to be 1. So we'll use a minus b times a plus b. And we're just going to keep the x squared plus 2 with it. So this is going to be x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 2. For example, 4, we're given 3x to the 6th power minus 3, and we're told to factor completely. For this one, we can factor out a 3 from each of these, and it would just be 3 times x to the 6th power minus 1. Now, think about this. Can we, we have a binomial. The two terms inside are separated by subtraction. Can we take the square root of each term? Can we take the cube root of each term? If we can take the cube root of each term, we will do that. So we can take the cube root of this x to the sixth. We can take the cube root of this one. That three is going to stay out front. So make sure you remember that. Your a is the cube root of x to the 6th. Remember, when we do this, we divide the power by the index, so that's x squared. Our b is the cube root of 1, which is 1. We have subtraction there, so we're going to use a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this is going to give us 3 times x squared minus 1 times x squared, let's do the brackets, x squared to the second power plus x squared times 1 plus 1 to the second power. So if we simplify this, we have 3 times x squared minus 1 times x to the fourth power plus x squared plus 1. From here, you can continue factoring that x squared minus 1 by taking the square root of the both of those and realizing it's a difference of squares. So if our a is x, our b is 1, we use a minus b times a plus b. a is x, b is 1, use a minus x, or sorry, a minus b times a plus b. This is going to give us 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 
times x to the fourth power plus x squared plus 1. So remember, whatever you factored prior to, whatever you're factoring in that step, still has to stay with your answer. Yesterday we left off with example 5. Uh, for example 5, it tells you to factor w squared minus 1 squared minus 11 times w squared minus 1 plus 24. So with this, you can give yourself um, like a, not a ledger, but you can give yourself something where you're replacing that w squared minus 1 with an x to make this a little easier for yourself. You just then have to remind yourself to replace the, the x that you are using with the w squared minus 1 and then completely simplify or completely factor. So if we're going to start this one, I'm just going to rewrite this where x is equal to the w squared minus 1. So this is going to give me x squared minus 11x plus 24. Now we know how to simplify this or factor this. We just find the factors of that 24 that add up to be negative 11. If we are looking for those factors, we have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. If all of these are negative in order to give us a positive when we multiply and a negative when we add, that negative 3 and that negative 8 give us the negative 11. So this factors out to be x minus 3 times x minus 8. Well, we said in the beginning that x is equal to the w squared minus 1. So we need to rewrite this with the w squared minus 1 in for x. So anywhere you see that x, we're going to put w squared minus 1. So this is just, I'm going to rewrite it up here. This is just fig figuring, oh my gosh, this is just simplifying to be w squared minus 1 minus 3 times w squared minus 1 minus 8. So from here, we're going to get rid of those parentheses. We're just going to have w squared minus 1 minus 3 and w squared minus 1 minus 8. We're going to continue this, and we're just going to combine like terms. So we get w squared minus 4 times w squared minus 9. You'll realize here that you have a difference of squares for both of these parentheses. So this is going to factor out further to be w minus 2 times w plus 2, because we just took the square root of the w squared and the 4. We're going to do the same with the w squared and the 9, and we get w minus 3 times w plus 3. So again, with this one specifically, it is a good idea for you to rewrite that w squared minus 1 to begin with as an x and then replace the x with the w squared minus 1 once you've factored what you have to start with. From there, you're just factoring completely. For example 6, we're just told to factor completely. For a, we're given x squared minus 3 w minus 3x plus x times w. Now with this, you realize that you have four terms, and we know that when we have four terms, we can factor by grouping. However, if you were to group the first two terms and the last two terms here, you wouldn't be able to have two sets of parentheses that are the same. So we are going to rearrange these terms before we do anything. My first term has an x squared, so I want another term that has an x to be next to it. If I choose to use the 3x, I'm going to have x squared minus 3x. Then I would just move the 3w over, so minus 3w plus x times w. We'll try to factor by grouping here. With your first set of parentheses, you would factor out an x. For the second set of parentheses, you would factor out a w. Now, when you rewrite this, you're going to have x times x minus 3 and w, so positive w, times negative 3 plus x. That second set of parentheses is not identical to the first. However, the terms inside of it are still the same. 
So we can just reorganize the terms that are in the second set of parentheses to be x times x minus 3 plus w times that 3 has a negative in front of it, so it's going to stay there, so x minus 3. Now our two sets of parentheses are the same, so I can rewrite the x minus 3 once and make another with the x plus w. For example, 6b, we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus, w, minus y squared. For this, I realize that I have a perfect square trinomial with those first three terms within this four-term polynomial. I'm going to factor that perfect square trinomial because I know that if I take the square root of that 9, I have 3. If I multiply it by a negative 2, I get that negative 6. So this is going to factor out to be x minus 3 squared minus y squared. This, from what you have here, is a difference of squares. You can take the square root of the first term. You can take the square root of the second term. They're separated with subtraction, so our a would just be x minus 3. Our b would be y if we do a minus b times a plus b. This is going to give us x minus 3 minus y times x minus 3 plus y. Get rid of the parentheses and just rewrite this as x minus 3 minus y times x minus 3 plus y. For the next set of examples that we're going to be going over, we're just going to be factoring completely. So we want to look at each of these and we want to ask ourselves, do we have a greatest common factor that we can factor out first? If so, we will do that then is a 1. If a is 1, find the factors of your c term that add up to be your b term, factor it like normal. Make sure if you factored out a greatest common factor, it stays in front. If a is not 1, find out if you have a perfect square trinomial, a difference of squares, or if you have to multiply your a and your c term in order to get the factors that add up to be your b term to replace your b term and then factor by grouping. You have to keep in mind as well your other forms of factoring with these. So we're thinking a factor by grouping, we're thinking sum and difference of cubes as well. So when we look at example 7a, we're given 3w cubed minus 3w squared minus 18w. So we look at these three terms and we realize 3, 3, and 18, all divisible by 3. They all also have a w. So their greatest common factor is 3w. We'll factor out the 3w. It goes out front. It's going to stay out front. Whatever is left over goes inside the parentheses. So 3w cubed divided by 3w is just w squared. Negative 3w squared divided by 3w is negative w. Negative 18w divided by 3w is negative 6. From here, our a is 1. So we're going to find the factors of negative 6. That add up to be a negative 1. We have 2 and negative 3. So we are going to factor this out. That 3w is going to stay out front. We're going to have w plus 2 times w minus 3. We are completely factored here, so this is our answer. Remember with these, if you decide to multiply them out, you should get exactly what you started with. So if I did 3w times w plus 2 times w minus 3, I would end, once I completely simplify, with 3w cubed minus 3w squared minus 18w. For example, b, we have 10x squared plus 160. With this, you have like terms with the 10x squared and the 160. They're both divisible by 10, so we're going to start this one by factoring out 10. The 10 goes out front. We have x squared plus 16 left over. Now you have two terms within that, those sets of parentheses. So you have a, bi a binomial. Check to see if you have the sum of squares 
or sorry, the sum of cubes, the difference of cubes, or the difference of squares. That x squared tells you you have a square there. You can take the square root of that. The 16, you can take the square root of that. However, you do not have a negative in between these two terms. So because there is not a negative between those two terms, you cannot factor this any further. And this is your answer. For example, C. We have 16A squared B minus 80AB plus 100B. So with these terms, they all have a B term. So we know we're going to factor out a greatest common factor. They are all also divisible by 4. So we'll factor out a 4B. When we factor out this 4B, it goes out front. Whatever's left over goes in parentheses. 16A squared B divided by 4B is going to be 4A squared. Negative 80AB divided by 4B is negative 20A. And 100B divided by 4B is a positive 25. From here, you have a trinomial in those parentheses. Your A is not 1. Ask yourself, do I have a special trinomial here where if I have a, the, a perfect square trinomial? Can I take the square root of my A term? Can I take the square root of my C term? We can take the square root of that 4A square. We get 2A. We can take the square root of that 25. We get 5. Now ask yourself, the sign in the middle is negative. So if I had a negative 2 times 2A times 5, Am I getting that negative 20a? I do. So this is, in fact, a perfect square trinomial. Because that sign in the middle is negative, we're going to do a minus b squared to represent that 4a squared minus 20a plus 25. We said our a was that square root of 4a squared, which is 2a. Our b is the square root of the 25, which is 5. So this is leaving us with 4b times 2a minus 5 squared. With these four terms, we are going to factor by grouping, for example, d. So for that aw plus mw, our greatest common factor is w. We'll factor out the w. For az plus mz, we can factor out a z. From here, we are going to have w times a plus m plus z times a plus m. Our two sets of parentheses are the same, so we have w plus z times a plus m. For example, e, we're given a to the fourth power b plus 125ab. You have a greatest common factor between these two terms. It is a, so we factor out the a, we have a, oh sorry, a and b, not just a, a and b. So we factor out a, b, we have a cubed plus 125 left over. Now if you look at this, we have an a cubed. So I'm going to ask myself, can I take the cube root of that 125? We can, it's 5. So my a for this is the cube root of a cubed, which is a. My b is the cube root of 125, which is 5. The sign in between these two terms is addition, so I'm going to use a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. Remember, sum of cubes. So this is going to give me a b because I factored that out, times a plus b times a squared minus a, oh, sorry, this b is 5, not just, not b. This b is 5, there we go. So negative a times 5 plus 5 squared. So from here, I'm going to have a b times a plus 5, times a squared minus 5a plus 25. 
for example f we have 12x squared y minus 26xy minus 30y our greatest common factor between these three terms is 2y so we'll factor out that 2y we have 6x squared minus 13x minus 15 from here this trinomial, we do not have a perfect square trinomial. So we are going to have to take the 6 and the negative 15 and multiply them out. The 6 times negative 15 gives us negative 90. We want the factors of negative 90 that add up to be a negative 13. We have 1 and 90. 2, 45, 3, 30, 5, and... 18. 5 and 18 are going to be our 1's. If the 5 is positive, 18 is negative, that gives us negative 13. So we are going to rewrite this as 2y times 6x squared minus 5x minus 18x minus 15. We are going to factor by grouping since we have four terms here. From the first set of parentheses we factor out an x. From the second we factor out a negative 3. So this is going to leave us with 2y times x times 6x minus 5 minus 3 times 6x. This should be, hold on, this should be a, f a plus 5x, I'm sorry. So then this is plus 5. And this is plus 5. Okay, so our two sets of parentheses are the same. So we're going to have 2y times 6x plus 5 times x minus 3.